So let's get on to this week's Best Picture winner. As Matt said at the beginning of the show, we are talking about Schindler's List from 1993. So for those who don't know, uh, this movie, it's the story about the real-life uh, industrialist Oscar Schindler during World War II and how he gradually becomes concerned for his Jewish workforce amidst their persecution by the Nazis. Matt will get into more of the details of that, but just kind of wanted to set the stage a little bit. It takes place during, um, like, Nazi... Yeah, it's World War II. It's a Holocaust. World War II, yeah, exactly. Uh, so this, I mean, th this is a huge, huge movie. I know some of those that we've talked about so far, um, may not have heard of, maybe not as, um, mainstream, but Schindler's List, I feel like is just one of those classic films. Um, it was directed by Steven Spielberg. The screenplay was done by Steven Zalian. And as soon as I saw his name, I'm like, hmm, that name sounds familiar. What mm -hmm. else has he done? Uh, he did The Irishman yep. earlier this year. He's going to hopefully win an Oscar for it. <laughs> um, he's also been nominated uh, for his screenplays with Moneyball and Gangs of New York. Um, he also did the TV series The Night Of, which we watched last year, which is about the Black Dahlia. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. With, uh, what's his name? Chris, Chris Pine. Pine. Mm -hmm. And Patty, Patty Jenkins Patty did that. Jenkins. That was pretty good. Yeah. You know what else he did? I don't know if you, in, you know what else he did that I, we watched recently? What? So, Searching for Bobby Fischer. Yes, yes, he did. I saw that on there as well. Yep. That is a good movie. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to hit on more, uh, a few more recent things. But yeah, so he has a ton of credits to his name. Um, and then he did the screenplay based on um, the novel by Thomas Keneally. Uh, so the movie stars Liam Neeson. He plays the main character, Oscar Schindler. We also have Ben Kingsley, who plays his accountant, Itzhak Stern. Uh, he plays a big role in, like, the actual list, Schindler's List. Um, and then we have Rafe Fiennes, who plays... I'm so bad with German pronunciations. <laughs> but he plays Amon Get, I think, is how sure. you say it. I don't remember. It's been a while since we've seen the movie. So if they say I'm... it in there and I mess, mess it up, I'm sorry. Um, but he's not a nice person, so it's okay if we get his name wrong. Um, but he, he's like the commandant for the, um, Jewish labor camp, um, in Poland. So those are kind of your three, uh, main characters. And this film was nominated for a whopping 12 Oscars and it won seven of them. And it won you know, most of the big ones here too. So it won for best director, um, best picture, adapted screenplay, went to Steven Zalian, uh, Janusz Kaminski won for cinematography. They also won set decoration, film editing, and of course, my beloved John Williams won for original score. So those are their seven wins. Um, Liam Neeson and Ray Fiennes also had uh, leading actor and supporting actor nominations. They did not win. Um, the other three nominations that they had were costume design, sound, and makeup. So just ran the gamut of pretty much every nomination you could have. Yeah, this is this is a movie that I think I think there are some movies that win Best Picture where they're probably gonna win Best Picture no matter what year they come out. Yeah, and there's not a lot of them, right? Otherwise, you know, you could say that about a lot or a few. This is a movie that I think if it comes out ninety three, ninety two, ninety four, for the most part, whatever year it comes out is probably gonna win Best Picture. Like that's, it's 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 like one of the best movies of all time is kind of what you're getting. Yeah, it's not like we reviewed Greatest Show on Earth last week. It's not something like that where uh, it's going to win Best Picture any year that it comes out, or uh, you know, even Green Book last year. Where I think uh, you kind of had to have certain certain movies come out and that one happened to be the hit of the year for it to win. Right. This is a movie that it's so personal to Spielberg he even hesitated to make it because it's so personal to him that it it was gonna win I think no matter what year it came yeah. out yeah and it, you know it's interesting that you mentioned about Steven Spielberg because he um like up front like he he felt like it would be blood money in a way if he if he earned anything off of his money so all of his royalties residuals anything um that the movie has made continues to make it all gets donated to the Shoah Foundation, which helps 
record and preserve um like testimonies of survivors from genocide around the world not just the holocaust but everything so Mm -hmm. it's like i said it's a deeply personal but i think like everyone involved seemed like they really had nothing but the best intentions in putting this movie together Mm -hmm. and i think he said he actually asked roman polanski to make this movie instead which is kind of weird in a way because roman polanski has had his issues and can't come back to the U.S. because of those issues, uh, but Spielberg ended up making it, and Polanski ended up making a, a similar movie, and The Pianist, uh, what, nine-ish years later, 2002? I think that's right. Uh, and won an Oscar for that, too. I always think of those two movies, just based on the subject matter, I always think Pianist and Schindler's List, those two movies are kind of similar to me, and it's kind of funny, he turned this one down, and Spielberg made it, and then he'd go on to make his own Holocaust movie, too. So. Yep, yep. Uh, but yeah, this movie, it's it's three plus hours long. Yep. I can't remember the exact, I got it here, three hours, 15 minutes long. So it's a really long movie, but this breakdown probably isn't going to take that long, because it is fairly, I don't want to say straightforward, but it, it opens with... Oscar Schindler, he's a part of the Nazi party. Uh, I actually kind of like how this movie, well, it actually opens up with uh, a Jewish family and it's colored because most of this movie is in black and white, but it opens with, uh, you know, like traditional, you know, color (laughs) uh, film. film, And they're lighting the menorah, I I think. They're lighting candles and then it kind of fades to black and then goes back back in time, basically. That's right, yeah. And... I like how it opens up with Oscar because he's basically rummaging through his apartment or his house or wherever he's living. and He's collecting every scrap of money. I don't want to say dollar. It's whatever they're using um, back in the day. Uh, He's pulling all of his money together and he's basically spending all of his money in one night to make one giant impression on really, really important Nazi officials. So he takes all of his money, puts on... Uh, like a swastika pin or Nazi party pin goes to a bar or restaurant where no one knows who he is. People are even asking who is this guy and no one knows. And he's so charismatic and so likable that he, he buys, starts spending all of his money. This is all the money he has in his life by buying drinks for all these people and trying to get in good with these high officials. And he does, he ends up making a big impression. And by the end of the night, um, it's kind of funny, it's kind of a cool scene where at the beginning, uh, someone asks a waiter, who is that man? And he's like, I don't know. But then by the end of the night, someone asks the waiter, who is that man? And he goes, that's Oscar Schindler! You don't know who Oscar Schindler is? So he, he makes this huge impression on him, and the point is, he wants to start a factory making pots and pans for the war, a uh, manufacturing factory, and he wants to have this in with all these officials so they can help him uh, start the factory, but then also he has people to sell to. So he he spends all of his money in one night to make this impression to kind of as a long con to help him have customers and people to financially support him when needed down the road. Yep. So I really like how it opens up. You kind of see what kind of man he is. He's willing to take a chance like that, uh, and it, it kind of pays off. So he does. He opens up a factory. Uh, and realizes he needs someone who can actually take care of the financials and run the day-to-day, and he gets introduced to Ben Kingsley's character, which, uh, what's his name? It's Zach Stern. Stern. So they get introduced to each other, and then Stern's job is to basically find workers for him and uh, make sure everything's running uh, correctly, and basically, Stern takes this as a chance to help out people he knows that are in trouble. Like yeah. he, he helps make fake work papers for people. He starts bringing in all these people who need work visas or permits to, you know, save their lives, and uh, bring them into this factory. And eventually, Schindler does find out about it, but. Uh, and he might be mad at first, but ends up not really caring that much as long as they're making the pots and pans for him. He doesn't really care. Mm-hmm. And then eventually uh, Rafe Fine's character gets introduced. 
and uh, he is in charge of overseeing the construction of another labor camp or something along those lines. Yep. And you mentioned earlier he he's just a straight up bad dude. He's a terrible person. He's just he's brutal. Uh, he at one point Oscar does try to get him to be nicer. I remember this where he tells him like. Show show them sympathy, and then they'll respect you back. Like I, Oscar Schindler, Schindler is telling him this, trying to get him to, you know, kill less people, shoot less people, trying to save some lives, and he does for like a ten minute period. Uh, Ray finds character, which we're both having trouble. Amon, yeah, all uh, right, does try showing sympathy towards uh, Jewish people, and it. Sh- Takes a couple people by surprise, but he does try doing it. But obviously, eventually that wears off, and he 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 gets frustrated and can't do it anymore. Uh, but him and Oscar kind of they don't butt heads, but they kind of have some back and forth where Amon assumes that Oscar also hates Jews, but he doesn't. He's starting throughout the movie, he's gaining sympathy for them because he sees everything that they're going through. Yeah, and he's trying to employ more and more into his factory to save their lives. Uh, but Eamon assu- assumes that he hates Jews too, but he doesn't. But he has to hide that sympathy because it isn't obviously isn't viewed that well. Uh, I remember one scene where they're packing up a bunch of uh, Jewish people onto a train, and it's hot out, and they're just sitting there, uh, and they're dying of thirst almost. And Oscar decides to he orders people to get a hose going and spray the. The train's down with, with water just to let him survive. And Eamon, you know, starts kind of making fun of him or saying, oh, you're giving them hope, you're cruel, you're cruel, kind of tricking himself into thinking that Oscar is just like him, even though he isn't. But eventually it gets to a point where Oscar wants to move, he wants to move the factory kind of out of uh Poland I think most of this takes place in yeah like he he wants to move it closer to like where he's from yeah like his hometown kind of get them out of the you know the heated area like the, the Poland the area of the factory is originally and is becoming a hot it's, bed. Yeah, it's like all Nazi occupied yeah so he's trying to move the factory to his, near his hometown kind of in the middle of nowhere to help protect these people but he has to get permission to bring all these Jewish people with him because obviously they don't, the Germans or the Nazis don't want them to leave. No. So he has to talk them into letting him take all these people with him, which he eventually does. Uh, He gets Ray Fine's permission, kind of begrudgingly, he gets his permission to do it. And that's where, like, the Schindler's List thing comes in. He has to come up with a list of who his workers are, uh, this is basically the list of people he's allowed to take with him and essentially save their lives. So him and uh, Stern, they, they make the list together. They try thinking of all the families they know and everyone. Uh, so they they eventually, it's over a thousand people. I know that. I can't remember the exact number. Uh, but they bring them out with them. They're in the factories. And I like how he turns it into a... He says it in the movie at one point too, Oscar does, where he's like, I don't want a single working bullet to come out of this factory because they turn into an artillery factory just because the war is going on and that's what they need. And he ends up saying something like that, like, no, no, you're making that too good. I don't want a single working bullet or or missile or whatever to leave this factory. So he's kind of <laughs> helping out twice by... Saving people's lives, but then not making working <laughs> artillery or ammunition. Uh, and eventually the war ends, but because he is part of the Nazi party, technically, he is now a wanted man. Oscar Schindler is. So he has to go out on the run. So there's a scene at the end where he's leaving in the middle of the night with his wife. And, uh, you know, all the workers are outside saying goodbye to him. You know, and they all love him now at this point because they saved his life and they they made like a ring for him to wear as a thank you and all this stuff and it's a really emotional scene and then he you know drives away uh the the factory workers get saved uh they get i can't remember the term but like when uh an allied force comes into town and 
you know, saves them from occupation. That happens, and then the movie transitions into present time at the time the movie was made, so 93. And uh, it shows Oscar Schindler's gravestone, and this is back in color now, and basically all the descendants of the Schindler Jews uh, show up, and uh, in tradition they put a rock on his stone, you know, to show basically honor or respect, so they all lay a, lay a stone on his grave, and that's how the movie ends. Yeah, and it was... It was... Uh, a really nice scene because it was like the actor and the person that they portrayed like walked hand in hand to his yeah that's right his site which was so, like being very touching yeah uh but yeah so really emotional movie uh it, it actually ends with a shadow on the gravestone someone's head and for years and years people thought it was steven spielberg but it was revealed that it was liam neeson so again kind of showing the actor and then the real life person kind of showing Liam Neeson's shadow on Mm -hmm. Oscar Schindler's grave. So it was really cool. Uh, This movie is made, it was funny when I was writing notes down to talk about this movie, something I wrote down was this movie felt like a mixture of a docudrama, like a traditional movie or biopic. But then parts of it really felt like a documentary to me where they would kind of get away from the main storyline of Oscar Schindler Mm -hmm. and then just show the conditions that a lot of these people had to deal with while being in the Holocaust. Like, uh, they would show them going through the train station, they would take all their possessions, and then they would show what the Germans would do with their possessions. They would just open their suitcase and pilfer through it and then put it in different piles or... When they would go into hiding, they would show all the different places people would hide in and sneak into. And it just, it felt like a documentary to me because it just, it didn't have Schindler or Stern or Eamon in it. It just showed these people dealing with these moments. And then when uh, I looked into the movie and the, and the, the director notes and everything on it, it actually says uh, Spielberg purposely made this movie in a documentary style to show the living conditions and other things that the Jewish people unfortunately had to live with. So I was like, like, Oh, okay. That I, well, it came across correctly then because that's exactly what I wrote down. Yeah. That it felt like a documentary. And then when I looked into it, he did that on purpose. Yeah. And like, you know, one scene I think about, and, and th- this was so sad as, um, you know, Schindler and Stern putting this list together of, okay, here are the people that were transferring to the new, place all of the women and children their train was mistakenly sent to auschwitz yep and the fear that all of the women had because they had heard um you know of the gas chambers and like the poison showers and stuff like that and so you know they they get sent there and their hair is all gets all chopped off and they're stripped of all their clothes and they're all just sent to this huge shower and all the women you just see the terror in their face where they all just think this is where we're going to die. It ends up just being a, a regular shower, but just, you're yeah. right, the intensity, and, and it did feel like a live documentary moment, not a dramatic scripted moment. So, uh, yeah, that's really fascinating that that was the style that he intended for. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, yeah, what were some, other than that one, because I had that one written down to talk about, too, when they think they're bring, being brought into a gas chamber and it ends up being a shower uh, what are some other moments that you, did you have any? Cause this isn't a movie that I wasn't sure how you would react to this movie. Cause one, it is kind of a war movie again. Uh, it's a very depressing topic, but a very important one. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's a longer movie too. Not necessarily all things that necessarily check your boxes of a movie that you yeah. would want to see. But o- overall, I mean, were there any scenes that stuck out to you, or how did you feel about this movie? Yeah, I mean, the, the movie was so, so well done, and like you said, the the story, the message is so important, and um, it's, yeah, it was done with such, like, reverence, and, but, you know, also they didn't, like, gloss over anything. Like, it felt, like I said, with that docudrama sort of feel, um, 
they did. They they kept the tough, ugly, nasty moments that were in there because that that's the stuff that actually happened. So it was a really, really compelling movie, and it feels weird to say that I enjoyed it. I don't know if I, if that's the right word, um, but like I walked away just being really appreciative of the movie, I guess. Yeah, well, I mean, it's a movie where you don't feel good for like five six of it right like it's a bunch of you you see the reality that these people had to go through and just how terrible it was and how they weren't even really treated as humans right. for most of the time which is just so terrible uh but then it does have somewhat of a happy ending right like he does save over a thousand lives so you know you, you're kind of happy you're happy by the end of it even though for the most part, this movie is about a, a terrible event that happened. Right, and, you know, I I think maybe that was one thing I struggled with a little bit in the movie, and it wasn't until, like, we finished it, and you and I talked through it a little bit, and I kind of read more about, um, like, the, the real events of Schindler and Stern and kind of their roles, and, because, yeah, like you said, Schindler started he, part, part of the Nazi party, and... At least in the beginning, the main reason for all of his decisions with, okay, yeah, sure, let's let's bring in a lot of Jewish people for the workforce is because he didn't have to pay them. Yeah, and, he's you know, so saving like a, money. A lot of these things were, they were business decisions. And so I remember, like, the movie was almost over, and I said out loud, I was like, okay, so this guy's, like, maybe, like, 40% good, right? And you're like, what? Like, keep watching. I'm like, okay. And so, yeah, by the end, like, you realize what a big impact it it he had on all these people but also the impact that they had on him where you know a lot of his decisions started just purely from a business and profitability standpoint but really did kind of under better understand what was happening and started to care for the people rather than you know promoting a a better business plan i guess and you know i you said they he ended up saving you know more than a thousand lives and people have tracked you know the descendants of those and it's it's wound up being more than six thousand lives yeah i think that might have been a like some text that i think that w was said at the end of the movie mm -hmm. like how many descendants have then come from those thousand yep. plus people and it ends up being a giant number yeah so yeah i've got a i've got a couple scenes here that really hit me, I mean, there no shocker here. There's some of the bigger scenes of the movie, uh, so like four or five of them here. One of them for me, I kind of mentioned it when they show all these people hiding, uh, just the lengths that some of these people would go with. I remember a kid jumps into basically a latrine mm -hmm. to hide, mm -hmm. and when he gets down there, there's like three kids already hiding down oh, there. That's right. Yep. Like that scene yep. is just brutal to me. The lengths that they had to go through and the the situations they were willing to be in to stay hidden uh, is just astounding uh obviously the girl in red scene or scenes where most of those movies in black and white but then they show a couple times throughout the movie uh, this girl in a red coat and the coat is the only thing in color where she's just wandering around throughout the movie and then by the end of it they show that she had been killed and she was, like, in a pile of other bodies being buried. Very, very brutal. Uh, you mentioned the gas chamber slash shower scene. Yeah. Uh, the ending is obviously very sad when he does the I could have done more when he's on, about to get in his car and get on the run. And they're presenting him with this ring as a gift. And he starts kind of going through everything in his head. Like, I could have sold my car. That's two, three people right there. Uh, I could have gotten rid of, you know, not the ring that they gave him, but all the other rings he has. I'm like, that's one more person. He's like, I could have, like, I could have saved more lives. You know, it's just so sad and emotional, like, just even now, get a little emotional thinking about it. But, like, where he just breaks down and thinking that he could have done more, and they're just like, no, no, like, like, look at all the people you saved. You did you did great. Like, don't don't think of it that way. Be happy for the people that you did save. That scene is... Just, just emotional as hell and very tough to watch. Uh, and then the last one I had is about Eamon, uh, Ray, Ray Fiennes' character. And this is a scene, when I saw it as a kid, 
Uh, this was the scene that was the most brutal or tough to watch for me. When you say kid, how young? Ooh. Yeah, a kid might be t- a young teenager. Okay. Maybe uh, 10 okay. to 13 in that range. <laughs> I watched yeah, a lot 10, of movies. 10 and 13 is very That's a big different. range, I guess. I'm a, I remember my dad sat me down and we watched Blazing Saddles when I was like seven years old. And that movie. Yeah, I think a lot of that stuff is. that That's easy to go over your head. Schindler's List, I think a lot yeah. of that stuff is yeah. boom right there. Well, I guess yeah, I had great parents or questionable parents on however you want to look at it then. I turned out all right, though. Yeah. But I think of the scene with uh, Ray Fine's character on the balcony. Yep. Where he just takes out a gun and then just starts randomly picking off, like, you know, people that people are in, in, in the, the camp. In the courtyard, yep. That scene was just tough to Awful. watch as any age. You know, it'd be, I'm hopefully not a kid, but as a young adult, adult, whatever, that scene is so tough to watch and see. Uh, that that one just always stuck with me, just because of how terrible it is, and you know, you someone go it goes down, and if someone's staying right next to them, they can't run; they just have to keep working as is. So yeah, that one, that one was tough. Uh, he was, I mean, he was both of them, both Liam Neeson and Ray Fiennes. They were both nominated for their performances as. Two almost like completely opposite characters. Oh, yeah. So yes, exactly. Uh, they they both, both did a really they, great job. They absolutely did. Yep. Mm-hmm. So what? What uh, score would you give Schindler's List? I give this a nine point three. Yeah, this is pretty high for the, only the third one in the nines for you. That's mm-hmm. pretty good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's um, yeah, just really well done movie. Mm-hmm. Not much, much else to say. Much, uh, and, yeah, we've talked about all all the other um, parts that I think are important. So you know, really, at the end of the day, it's um, yeah, really, really well done. So mm-hmm. nine point three for me. Yep, I gave it a nine point six. Uh, I mean, really, the only thing maybe holding it back from being up there or a ten or something like that is uh, while I, I appreciate, I have mixed feelings on the document documentary uh, style of it. Uh, because it, I definitely watch it. I definitely feel like I'm pulled out of the story of the movie, but then I appreciate that he's showing me all these situations and you actually get to see what these people went through. So, I mean, when, when we're in the nines, I'm getting very minute details and nitpicking about a score. So really I wouldn't change a whole lot about this movie, but there are times where like, I appreciate what he did with the, doing the uh, documentary style. Uh, but at the same time it did, I could feel it pulling me out of the, the Oscar Schindler storyline, and it doesn't really matter in the end, but that's really the only thing, I guess, that would hold it back from being a 10 for me. Sure. But but definitely up there. It's one of the top ones. I mean, like I said, this is a movie that almost whatever year it's coming out of, it's probably winning Best Picture because of how powerful it is. So, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep, exactly. So that wraps it up for our review on Schindler's List. 